On today's episode, we're making homemade tarallis. Mama nonna's tarallis. Hi guys, welcome back to the next episode. In this episode, we're doing Mama nonna's tarallis. In uh, our region where we come from, uh, the grandmothers, we call them Mama Nonna, and the grandfathers, we call them Papa Nonno. So this is really my mother's recipe. I had never seen anyone make this type of recipe. I'm sure that she invented it. So let's get started to do Mama Nonna Giovanna, or like everybody calls it, Giovannina's Taralis. So for this recipe, I have eight cups of AP flour sifted. I'm gonna add two and a half cups of sugar and a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. So we're just going to mix it on low just to combine everything together for a little bit. And you always want to give the flour a little bit of help, whatever's stuck on the sides. Okay. So here are, we have eight eggs. I'm gonna put them in a bowl because I'm gonna combine all my wet ingredients together. Eight eggs, a cup of vegetable oil or canola oil, whichever one you have, not olive oil, vegetable or canola oil. Or avocado oil. And two cups of milk. It just you warm it up just like you're warming up a baby's bottle just that it takes out the chill so you don't want to cook the eggs we don't want scrambled eggs and I'll mix this all together so traditionally my mother would make this by hand but as we get older we tend to embrace what helps us a little bit so we're gonna try it with the hand mixer today but we always do this by hand. And for easy pouring, I'm gonna put it in a measuring cup. There we go. And we're gonna start incorporating the liquids into the flour, the sugar, and the teaspoon and a half of magic. There we go, we could start next. So I added about a third. I'm going to wait till it mixes a little bit. Traditionally, we would form a well and pour the eggs in the middle and show you that way. But we'll be showing you two different variations of this throughout the next year to come. We are doing the milk ones this time, but we also have a recipe with white wine and Sambuca Tarali as well. And I'll add in the rest of the liquid. So these tarallis, I grew up eating them. My mother grew up making them with her mother. So this has been a long time generation past. And we all know and love these tarallis. So any type of holiday season or holiday in general, or just regardless, anytime you would visit her, she would always have a stash of these put away. These are chewy, Tarallis, they're not hard ones, and we're going to show you just exactly how to get a chewy, soft tarali with, um, let's say, with Nona Joannina's recipe. So, okay. what do you think? Is that this that good? Looks, yeah, that looks good. Perfect. So, hands always clean because you're going to be lifting this up and grabbing all the rest of the dough, but you can also use a spatula. So, we're just going to grab that out. And we're going to be dumping this on. You want to explain what this round thing is again? It's an eating board. Tumbanyo. So my mother would always hear, well, when she would hear that word, when my grandmother would call my mother or any of her five children to go get this, well, they knew what day was ahead of them. Exactly. We're making homemade pasta or we're making, sorry, I don't know how to take this off. There we go. There we go. Okay, take off the mixer. Lightly flour your your board and it might take a bit more of flour at the end we'll tell you exactly how many cups of flour is we use but also keep in mind when you're baking 
you can never get exact measurements so you have to go by touch and feel and uh, we'll do our best to showcase that and you guys really have to try for yourself give the recipe a few tries before you really get your um, before you get the hang of it okay. now we start the kneading process and as you go along we add flour may you add some more flour with this even some on my hands, quite a bit on my hands. This is a good trick, always keeping your hands floured along the way. And kneading is just taking and combining and slowly incorporating it. I heard you say I'm losing So starting off with a base of flour doesn't mean that that's the total amount that you will use. As you will see, we're almost adding up to two cups worth of extra as we go along because the rest we want to do by hand. And my mother's using a bench scraper to bring all of the mixture and the stickiness back together to continue to incorporate. And I'll fall down to this. <laughs> so this is <laughs> part of our canter. <laughs> But you see that it's a build that you really have to work at. So you can just imagine the type of exercise cooking can do the workout. That's why those Italian ladies have those big muscles. No gym for them. Hip for Miss Lourdes. And now you're gonna start. Yeah. We're cutting it in half, and now I'm gonna finish kneading half at a time. And we collect everything, and we start. It has to feel like a pasta dough, maybe. That's the best way to explain it. Mm. Not too soft, not too hard. Yeah. Should be able to get a bounce back, but not stick to your fingers. Mm -hmm. Almost there, just press. Once you feel that you have like a smooth surface, that your dough feels nice and smooth and all collected together, I will be putting this in a container for how long? S slightly oiled, very, very little. And you have to oil also the sides. Like so that, that it doesn't dry? Exactly, like that the dough doesn't stick. Because now it has to rest for about four hours. And does this rise at all? Hardly, it barely rises because remember there's that. just, yeah, there's just like a teaspoon and a half of uh, baking powder. So it's just to make the gluten rest exactly so this is what we'll be using just any type of container like my mom said use a vegetable oil or the oil that you have chosen to use in the recipe lightly not so much but it's just so that it doesn't stick and we'll be adding it to here and then we'll cover it right yes definitely yes you want to cover it because you don't want the air to dry out so we usually cover it with um with the tea with towels, the no, no, with the top of a container. Oh, sorry, with the top of a container or also tea towels, what they used back in the days, right? Exactly. Yeah. So as mentioned, so the top doesn't dry, we're just going to put a little, little bit. So I'm going to put in a squeeze bottle, we have the oil, a little dab in my hand. I'm going to rub my hand with it and I'm just going to gently pat the dough all around. That's it. A little bit of a shine. Now I'm going to put the lid on. We're going to continue with the second half of the dough and we'll be back soon. So we put the dough in uh, containers, like I, we said, lightly oiled, a little bit of a uh, dab of oil, even on the top like that, the dough doesn't um, dry. I prepared some before already and they ha it has to rest for four hours. So to show you and to speed things up, I prepared some already this morning, the dough this morning. I wrapped it up like my mother used to, we find a warm place in the house. At my childhood house, it was my brother's room. She would clear the, uh, the top of his dresser, put a tablecloth, put the dough, 
and we used to cover it with I don't know how many blankets for four hours. So I still do the same. So I, I, this obviously was in here. We took it out to show you, but it was in the spare bedroom. So we wouldn't put it near a cold uh, drawer. But hold on one second. I'll bring you closer for a closer look. Okay, so I'm going to uncover it. As you see, there's quite a few layers of blankets. And there's the dough. As you can see, it doesn't rise. All it has to do is rest. That's all. The gluten has to rest and it makes it easier for us to uh, roll them out. So now we just very lightly boil the board. Very, very lightly. We do not flour. If you made a mistake and maybe you put too much oil, what you could do, you could take a paper towel and, and damp it off. We're gonna roll it into a log. I'm gonna hold this down. Yeah. <laughs> Try to make it as even as possible. And it's nice when you're in two, because since I have my daughter here helping me, I'm gonna divide the dough in half. There we go. And you're gonna cut maybe like about an inch of the dough. I don't know, about maybe seven, eight inches or so. And by rolling, you're also working on another little bit of dough. So you, they're all nice and smooth. Pinch, and I usually give it a little twist. And there you go. So we're laying them on, just to show you, a sheet pan with a lined with a kitchen cloth and we're gonna just be lining them out you can prepare a bunch of these trays uh, just while you're waiting to uh, do the cooking process just lay them put another tablecloth over because we don't want these to dry right exactly that's it we're gonna show you once we're finished we're gonna show you how I, I lay them down and In a large and deep pan, bringing water to a boil, what you'll do is gently lower in your tarallis. And with a fork, you're just gonna slightly move them around just to ensure that they are not sticking to the bottom because these will show you that they're cooked once they float to the surface. And when that happens, they are ready to take out. What you'll do is place them back on a sheet pan liner that's lined with a tea towel and you will bring them back to your station where you will cover them once more until they are ready to go in the oven. So you're going to be continuing this process until all the tarallis are boiled, covering your boiled ones so that they don't dry out and continuing to cook the rest of them. Once they have all been boiled, this is time for the oven process. You're going to be laying them on a wire rack all out, all at the same time until as many can fit, just leaving yourself a little bit of space because you will be keeping a close eye on this, constantly moving them around from hot space to another and turning them around just to ensure that they get that beautiful golden color. So there we have it. Donna Giovanna's taralis that are soft and delicious. And I'm gonna crack one open for you just to show you how Soft, they really are super super soft so these are a great snack like my mother said for your kids to have always to have on the go yeah we always had them anytime we were out or around or on vacations road trips they were fantastic like uh, Nancy said on the go sometimes you need a little bit of something to tie you over so good and uh, they're very neat they make no crumbs in the car so this is my mother's original recipe mama nonna Giovanna and everybody calls it Si Juanina. Until next time, happy holidays. Happy holidays, buon Natale a tutti. Ciao.